Honey, I'm home, and let me tell you, work was a real doozy. To recap, for the last couple of weeks I've been gallivanting about Europe, predominantly London and Paris, which is why I wasn't making videos in that time, but now I am, and here's what I did. Before I get into that though, quick sub note, if you haven't already seen Emily the Brave's newest video, you really, really, really should. On to the trip, shall we? So on the first day we went to Westminster Abbey, which is an old church where a lot of important people are buried, including several former rulers of England, like Edward the Confessor and Queen Elizabeth. And that's not even to include the extraordinarily important people of other fields who are buried there, Charles Darwin, Isaac. Newton, Friedrich Handel. I stood on Laurence Olivier. Who have you stood on today? I just had to close my door because my mom is watching a Charlie is so cool like video in the other room. What is my life? Later on we saw the outside of St. Paul's Cathedral which looks a lot like the Indianapolis Capitol building but like bigger. Oh why is the world all weird? Oh it's because I'm in a ball. We crossed the Millennium Bridge, which, fun fact, was not actually destroyed by Death Eaters to the Tate Modern. The Tate Modern is like a modern art museum inside of a restructured power plant. It's very cool, and it's free. London has a lot of street performers as well, the quality of which tend to vary. One day the Queen called me to her. She said, Thomas, your time's up. You've served me well. Seven years have passed. It's time for you to go home. Yeah, before you go, take this apple. Went to the Globe Theatre, which is a reconstructed version of the Globe Theatre that Shakespeare's plays would have been originally played at. I saw Anne Boleyn, and it was really quite well done. Anne Boleyn is notable for being the only play, or at least the only play that I'm aware of, where King James I is wearing a dress. A trend that, weirdly enough, continued throughout the trip. Much later on in the trip, I saw Much Ado About Nothing with Catherine Tate and David Tennant. I saw David Tennant in a skirt. For future reference, playwrights and play producers, not every play needs a guy in drag. That's sort of an optional thing. Loving David Tennant and Catherine Tate aside, this play is really, really, like, phenomenally good. Also, it's signed. No big deal. The next day we went to Buckingham Palace where you don't say the H and it was big and royal E. Woo, springy bits. Unfortunately, we weren't allowed to film on the inside of the tour, so I can't show you any of that. However, I am now qualified to tell you every facet of the construction of Princess Catherine's wedding dress. So. Any questions? This blacksmith is leaning nonchalantly on a lion. England. After all that, we had the shortest notice YouTube gathering of all time, literally the day before. I'm like, hey, Hannah, we should have a YouTube gathering in 14 hours. It's a good thing people showed up for that, or that would have been really embarrassing. Here are a list of people who were there, organized by hair length. The day was pretty much amazing. We spent most of the time walking around Hyde Park, talking about things I'm very much not at liberty to repeat, and we ended the gathering, as all gatherings do, by renting pedal boats. No, seriously. Thanks to all of you who came, it was so awesome, Handheart. The next day, Hannah came over early and we did the Cooking with Dana video, wherein I look like a giant, but in actuality, Hannah is just really short. We found a toddler. That was Luke there who came over a bit later. Turns out, most of the time, Luke is actually a really nice guy. Yeah, I was disappointed too. Kim also came over from Cardiff for the day, so we went to the overground station to greet her where this happened. I've even... forgotten what Kim looks like. Kim looks like a Welsh person. I see, I see already. She's wearing a blue shirt. Pause the video. If you look here, you can see both Hannah and I starting to sprint to go greet Kim. However, if you look here, this man was apparently so caught up in the excitement, he just decided to run with us. And then tried to walk away nonchalantly as if it didn't happen. Oh, yes it did, sir. Yes, it did. And with Kim there, the four of us who have been friends through YouTube and Skype for some time were finally all in the same place. Oh, and Kim had a messed up eye. What are you doing? Why is your hat? What's this? It's a messed up eye. But you seem to find hilarious, and I don't. Don't wink at me. Stop it. <laughs> People are going to get the wrong idea, Kim. <laughs> it's funny. Because her eye was messed up. So pretty much the rest of the morning, we... Well, I'll just let Luke explain it. Feet, feet, feet. Basically what this day consists of is me walking behind these three, and these three having fun conversations and me being left out. Look how much fun they're having. Guess how much fun I'm having. Guess what my face looks like right now. So after Luke stopped sulking, we went to the Doctor Who experience, which is amazing. The whole thing is broken up into two parts, the first half being almost a ride, where you're not on a ride, but you're having like an adventure with Matt Smith's Doctor, and there's Daleks and explosions and special effects, and it's really cool. But the best part is the second part, which is essentially a Doctor Who museum, where they had Daleks and monsters and costumes and Captain Jack's coat and David Tennant's TARDIS. Oh my gosh. Literally, we're sitting in front of the ninth and 10th Doctor's TARDIS while David Tennant's regeneration scene is playing off to the side where he's like, I don't want to go. Oh my gosh. Hannah cried. I didn't though. I was just chopping onions at the time. I love you, Ken. <laughs> <laughs> yep. 
I think it is pretty safe to say that day was the best thing ever. The next day I went to Cardiff, which is the capital of Wales. I have a certain affinity for Wales, and I'm not sure where that comes from, but it may or may not have something to do with Gwen Cooper. <sighs> and then I went on a Doctor Who tour, because Doctor Who is shot in Cardiff, and I'm not ashamed to admit that's the main reason I went to Cardiff in the first place. Look, it's the green from Matt Smith's first episode, and there's Sarah Jane's house. That's the ballroom from the Family of Blood, which takes place right before World War I, making this World War I memorial sort of ironically placed. Ah, Torchwood Tower! There's this wall that was the secondary entrance to the Torchwood base that is covered in stuff dedicated to Yanto Jones. And look, it's the actual Bad Wolf graffiti. I flipped crap. Also, since Cardiff is where Kim lives, I hung out with her and her two friends again, who were lovely. I forgot to mention, one of the reasons I love Wales so much is because of the accent. Kim doesn't have that accent, which is why she is such a disappointing friend to have. Luckily, though, even though that's not her normal voice, she can do a pretty darned good Welsh accent. So we got this TV channel, yeah, and it's called S4C. What S is it? S so naturally, I've created a petition for her to use that voice for the rest of her life. Please consider signing. Love the Welsh. Okay, this video is going really long and my voice is dying, so I'm just going to do the rest of the London stuff and all the Paris stuff in the next video. I will see you then. Cheers, mate! So we got to Fairyland and the Queen gave me a green suit to wear. And I played my guitar at the Fairy Ball.